today will come to show up. I call this Finance Committee meeting to order on this Wednesday, December 5th. I'm going to call it 5.02 p.m. Uh, roll call. Mr. Mays? Present. Mr. Davis? Present. Mr. Guerra? Present. Ms. Fields? Present. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Present. Mr. Winfrey? Present. Ms. Galloway? Mr. Griggs? Present. Ms. Worthing? All right, so we got a poem. This gentleman threw me a pen to the he beat you to it. You might want to replace it for him. Uh, Before we get to the agenda, I always like to ask if any changes or amendments to the agenda. Let's start putting that on the Finance Committee agenda at the first after roll call. Any changes or additions to the agenda? M Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Chair, not just the, the, the Finance Chair, I mean, not just the Finance Committee, all the committees. We were requesting that uh, procedural. Order on the agenda on all uh, committee agendas. Um, I've got a change and addition to the agenda um, that I want to put before the special order. That's going to be with our staff, um, Davina. Um, so I'm going to put Davina as it relates to a discussion. I know as it relates to a resolution item. 180613, the biennial budget. So we're going to put that before special order. If there's no objections, is there any objections to that? Other than that, um, is anybody from the treasurer's office here, the county treasurer's office? I can represent, but no. You're going to talk about the it? County treasurer's office. No. County treasurer. I ask that they be here. I talked to the land bank and they called me. So let's keep our ear open and eye open, everybody, for anybody from the county treasurer's office. I was going to move that around a little bit. But other than that, for right now, we can go back into it. No other agenda changes. Uh, Mr. Moon, how you doing? All right. Um, with no objections, I would so order that change. And then we would now proceed. Um, Davina, is something you want us to know about that resolution. Right. Um, I have spoken to uh, Ms. Wheeler, the city attorney, and she did agree with um, what I had noticed about the resolution. So she is bringing an amendment, and I have spoken to Mr. Newsom as well. But basically, uh, 180613 speaks to um, having a public hearing. Um, this is the new charter um, section that says that the budget shall be presented twice a year. And that section that speaks to the December one says that on the first Monday in December, the mayor shall submit a budget to council. What should have happened is we should have scheduled a special council meeting on that first Monday. And she could have done a presentation and then we could have scheduled that hearing. But she did present it on that day, or submit it on that day, I should say. It is as this resolution. But that section of the charter also speaks to having a hearing after um, the budget is presented to council. Normally the mayor would do a budget presentation. We have a special meeting where she actually does a presentation. This charter speaks to a presentation. So after that presentation, the charter says no more than no sooner than ten, no later than twenty days you have to have a hearing. The resolution says um, that that hearing would happen after formal adoption of the resolution. But the section of the charter doesn't speak to that. It only says after the presentation. So my concern was that if you didn't have, if you didn't schedule the hearing until after you adopted the resolution on Monday, you would have to have a hearing on December 21st, that Friday, or the day after Christmas, the 26th, 27th, or 28th. Otherwise, you're going to miss this deadline. The 10th day would be, um, that Thursday, so you couldn't have it before that Thursday, and the 30th or the 20th day would be New Year's Eve. So, with that being said, I suggested that the presentation happen today, 
because that section of the charter only speaks to um, her doing the presentation, and then you can schedule the hearing. It doesn't say anything about adopting a resolution. It just says, like normal, she does the presentation, you have the hearing. So, if you have the hearing today, I can schedule the hearing, or sorry, if you have the presentation today, I can schedule that hearing for the 18th, where you already have a meeting. Otherwise, you will have to have a meeting during the Christmas holidays. Uh, let me say this. Can you get a copy of that section of the charter between now and the next 10, 15 minutes and give it to the yep. council people? Yep. I want to see that section of the charter. And then I would say this. I got a call from Mr. Newsom earlier this week. And so um, when we try to enact this new charter and do things timely, I can't speak for y'all, but I don't think we going to um, go to jail if we don't. So I'm glad that you caught that. We're going to try to conform as we learn this new charter. I appreciate you and Angela and Mr. Newsom and Ms. Brown. And so whatever you recommend after I read it, so you know y'all interpret stuff sometimes different than council folks. So I want the council to read it. You say you're going to leave by what time? I leave by 6. Okay, so if you can get that to us now, then we'll stick with it before you leave and then reach a decision. Okay. Madam um, Winfrey Carter had some. No, no, I'm fine. Go ahead. What was your question? I wanted to acknowledge someone else. Um, Mr. Um, Newsom, you have some. To so you. Uh, to we'll you go through her. She in control. No, I was going to say he's pre pre prepared to present. Okay. Before I present, I do want to make something perfectly clear now. If you read the charter, Section 7 of the charge. This is not in place of the presentation that we do in spring. This is an addition to it. So I want just to make that clear that the new charter says that we have to do two public hearings. We have to do two proposed budgets, one a preliminary budget and one a final budget. So it adds um, a preliminary budget here in December and then the formal final formal proposed budget in March. And as I told you, Councilman, uh, and I do appreciate and respect the work of the committee, of the, of the, of the charter committee, um, I'm as well. I'm a little off of, you know, but this was, but Quincy here, so I ain't going to say that. But this, I will say, and, you know, I'm going to put it on the record that this is one of the um, proposed charter amendments that I'm going to push hard for us to remove this particular milestone. The reason is, is because it's very difficult uh, functionally for finance to come right out of audit and then go right into a budget. This budget literally is the same budget. The second year the biennial budget shifted back a year and then the first projection shifted back a year because we have not had time to sit down with the Department of Budgets for them to complete their budget, for them to even submit their budgets. We don't have revenue projections. So I am prepared to kind of go through these numbers at a high level as part of a presentation, not, but I want to make that clear. And I'm not going to do the presentation now. We're going to get back onto the agenda. We'll hit that presentation at that time because I'm going to prioritize some business here today, particularly with this AE conference. And so, um, Quincy, I don't think the Charter Revision Commission meant any harm, but I think that's going to be one that's going to be looked at and then we'll debate it. But I know um, that the intent was for good fiscal responsibility, and so we'll see what happens. Um, I'm going to hope you kind of, you know, work with us on these amendments, all charter stand amendments. Sabina. I just want to say the city attorney did just give me the amended um, resolution, which takes out that language about it, uh, adopting the resolution before you can have the hearing, and just adds um, the presentation language. Um, I will so, say. So where is the amended resolution? Right here, I'm going to make copies. But. Do we all have? Not yet. She just handed it to okay. me. I'm going to go make copies and make copies of that section. Okay. But the clerk, I did speak to her, um, Angela. <coughs> um, the language wherever it says, um, well, this is, well, now this is changed to adopting a budget. Um, she wanted to be accepting. And so every, in, the, in the language, she just wants to make sure that the, the council accepts. Or she wants it to say received. So the, the clerk wants it because you received, you're not, you're not approving it, you're not saying you agree with it or anything, you're just saying you got it. So you got what you need. So yeah, but this needs to be a little bit further. When you get, when you get ready, I won't be here. back up 
And I'll be here. Huh? I might not be here, so I just, I'm just going to point that out and I'll highlight so it. So you ain't got to come back before? Nope. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to highlight your copy to make sure that you amend it to say C's. Okay. When you come back, if you need to, we're going to just stop and let you in. If no objections, if it is, we'll try to do it anyway if we get the vote. But other than that, um, y'all get that together and we're going to keep moving. Miss Bills, you had your hand up. You was talking about that fan and the heat. Now nah, it's very warm work. in here. I wanted the window open. I don't know. This is giving us more air or not? It's hot air. Well, y'all want it off? Yeah. Miss, you can get that off. Okay. Wait a minute, guys. I mean, this one. Two more juices. Okay. You got some window. window yeah, yeah, just crack it. Yeah, that's right. Right. It's 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 not air for this. We'll see what happens. Okay, look, I'm going to ask that 180420, the special order master fee schedule, I'm going to ask that that be uh, postponed and kept on for two weeks without any objections. Any objections? So ordered. Moving down to the resolutions, the first resolution is 180583, AECOM. Uh, I want to lay a uh, little foundation, if I may. This is a one point what one million dollar contract. Um, moving forward, we got all the players I think we need in the room, and um, you know, at the end of the day, we gonna see if this moves to council, moves to special affairs, if it um, rejected or accepted. And um, what I want to do starting now because I've heard conversation about a $5.5 million contract. In fact, that was, I think, the amount of the contract. And so, who is here from AECOM who can enlighten this council on um, the services we got for $5.5 million? And um, I know there are some presentations. I got a call about setting up the screen. But if uh, y'all work with me, I'm going to try to get us through this and everybody will get what they say. Um, is it you, Mr. Mark? Mr. Chairman, it will be me. But I have my colleagues here to answer. Okay. Um, Ms. Fields, did you have something? Yes. A uh, point of information, actually, is um, Dr. Schwartz here. Who is Dr. Schwartz? Is Dr. Dr. Schwartz is the, is the, the person from the university? He's from U of M. Yeah, I'm familiar. When he come in at about 5.30, they'll call it to my attention. I'm familiar with that. And we'll see the relevance of that, but I'll entertain but some of my, that. My question is, he is going to be here. My answer is about 5.30, somebody of that nature, I've been notified, might come in. Mr. Moss. Yes, sir. Uh, can you give us a brief overview of the type of services that AECOM provided for um, $5.5 million? You want to join us or if, if, if you, somebody else wants to speak? If you would, we, we prepared a, a slight presentation. Is this fine with you, sir? It's, it's, if it's okay with you, Mr. Chair, if they have a, a slide presentation. Okay, just, well, I just, bet they could do what they like, but that's, that's what we relevant about, and I'm going to be really particular on time because we're going to be very to, short sir my, yeah. my slides are only now you know I'm, a, I'm rude I, 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 interrupt. I, I understand Go ahead, your, uh, I, I know you're right I want to move <laughs> to suspend the five minute rule only for this item about the AECOM well right now you've made a motion correct correct okay so my thing is it's a motion on the floor to suspend the five minute rule council people if y'all know what that is is there a second miss worthing um you want to sit here you are comfortable there you you want a second i'll second that okay so i gotta keep my peripheral vision going i got a council player on this so it's been moved and properly second to suspend as we call it the five minute rule just for this item any discussion, Mr. Day? No, unless we're going to suspend it for whatever uh, discussion necessary, deemed necessary by any other councilman. That's your position. That's my position. Mr. Davis will log a no vote unless it's changed. So is that a substitute motion, Mr. Day? Yes, it is. So is I'm understanding the substitute motion to be um, you want the five-minute rule suspended for 
other council business as well? Yes, or another council member without priority, yes. Um, is there a second? Is there a second? I support his motion. So you got a substitute motion on the floor. Any discussion on the substitute motion to suspend the five-minute rule as it relates to other council business? Um, is there a problem? Was there a second? Yeah, I second it. I second Mr. Davis' substitute motion. It was a second. I hesitate. Parliamentary inquiry. Can the chair second the motion? I have done it, and I'm going to rule that I can, and we're going to keep moving because I am a council person. And when I don't see some other people seconding it, I will second. Is there a problem? If Maybe. there's a problem with you um, supporting the motion, I'll support Right that now, motion. I don't see a problem. Okay. Is there any discussion on the substitute motion? I don't hear any appeals, so with how to rule, we move forward. Mr. Davis, discussion on the substitute motion. Yes, because I might deem something very important to me that I might want more inquiry on. Okay, let's see how the substitute motion go. I'll be supporting it. Um, I think that we can't pick and choose what's important on the five-minute group. You are the chair. We're going to probably do some wonders with that group, Mr. Gerald. Uh, I miss this field. I think we most certainly can pick and choose on what we want that five-minute rule on. Um, and that's fine. So that'll be two discussions. I'll have my second one to say behind you. Uh, we can pick and choose, but as a group. And so I watch the majority and minority votes when it has come up before. This one has come up. Look like we can win the substitute motion. Look like we might can win or lose. So I'll call for the vote. All in favor of the substitute motion signify by saying aye or raise your hand. Oh, okay. All opposed the substitute motion. One, two, three, four. The motion fails. Now the original motion. Let's see, is there any further discussion on the original motion to suspend the five-minute group? I'll say this, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And it's going to be bad to try to handle business under five-minute group. I'm going to stick with you, Mr. Davis. I'm going to vote no. And if this motion fails, that's not good. We'll figure out what to do from there. But I'm that type of politician on some of these rules that shouldn't be there in the first place. Any more discussion on the original motion? I'm going to restate the original motion to suspend the five-minute rule for this discussion only. Um, any more discussion? Mm -hmm. I have something to say. Yes, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to support um, this motion simply because AECON has been before us what, maybe a um, couple of weeks ago during the investigative hearing. Okay? And I think all of the questions that we have or had for AECON, we already got those. We already got those answers. So I'm not going to support the motion. Interesting, Miss um, Worthy. I didn't get my questions answered, and I have quite a few. Uh, also, we were silenced by the chair. So I would like this opportunity to ask as many questions as I'd like uh, of AECON. This is another million dollars. It's a big deal. Um. Miss Fields. I was also a council person at a hearing that was not allowed to ask questions. So I, and many things have happened subsequent to that. So I have many questions I want to ask, and I've come fully prepared, as usual, with research and documents to reference um, for my questions. Mr. Davis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think it's really unfortunate how other people think they got priority on, over other members of this body. Uh, as Councilwoman uh, Carter stated, we went thoroughly with AECOM in a hearing, but some of our colleagues was not there. I don't know the reason, but I might have some questions in another part of this committee that I won't answer, but I won't have privy to get it because of whatever the case may be. Mr. Garrett, did you have something? Well, I do have something, and then if there's no further discussion, I'll call for the vote. 
I heard said in this public arena that the chairperson wouldn't allow folks to vote. Guess who the chairperson, I mean the talk. Guess who the chairperson was? Me, Councilman Mays. Guess what I do? I try to allow everybody to talk, particularly if and when they're there. Now, Ms. Worthen and Ms. Fields and missed the last two hearings. AECOM came up, swore in seven people. Ms. Fields, the fact of the matter is you wanted to make statements and ask questions during their opening presentation, which I said was like a quick inquiry, like a point of information. And then you went to calling me names in the public. And then a press conference happened. Those are the facts. So I'm not studying some of this, what's being said, but I am studying take care of city business. The hearing is still going on. Two of them has been missed by the people who want to kind of control and deal with this today. Two of them. The next one is the 12th. Let's see if you're there. I spoke last week about people ordering tons of information individually and trying to conduct and do their own thing. I encourage council persons to do their own thing. But when we set up a special proceeding specifically for that, do that. Don't try to change. Now let me say this. I'm going to already count these votes. And the swing vote going to lie with the president. Yeah, they're sitting right at you, the swing vote on how this is going to pass or fail. Because I'm hearing what Carter, Winfrey Carter is saying, I'm hearing what Mr. Davis is saying, and I'm hearing what I'm saying. I mean, this motion going to go to move it to the floor, the special affairs, to postpone it or deny it. I'm going to be leaning toward approving. And all of these questions and details on this $1.5 million, I'm going to still have a lot to say on keeping the priority of the business on track, no matter how many minutes you got. So this is my position. I would say for right now, we're going to keep it at five of folks who normally don't want more than five, who made the rules for five, if they've got some up. I'll keep it at five, and then later on in the meet, we can reconsider. That's my position. So I'm going to vote no on the motion. I'm going to try to proceed with AECOM and others on relevant business. And then what I'll do, I'll review this later if the motion fails. Because I'm an advocate of more than five. But I'm not an advocate of more than five when folks are saying bad things about me and this council and they miss it in action. Everybody know what the motion is to suspend the five-minute rule? Everybody got their own decisions made. Let's call for the vote. All in favor of this motion to suspend the rule, signify by saying aye and or raise your hand. Aye. Um, all opposed? Any abstentions? The motion fails four to four, so let's proceed. Mr. Uh, Moss, the floor is yours. Mr. Mays, can, can you have them identify themselves, please? Yes. Yeah, Mr. Moss, can you identify yourself? Miranda, identify yourself for the record. Help me out, Janelle. My name is Joseph G. Moss, Jr. I am a senior vice president of ACOM. My responsibility is direction of strategy, development, and business for the water business line globally. Uh, with me today, I have my colleague. I have a number of my colleagues. I have Patrick Clifford, Vice President of the Midwest. He is responsible for everything that happens in the Midwest, which Michigan Falls. Uh, Mr. Ed Thorpe, uh, who is here as our program manager. Uh, I think I have, oh, I have Mike <coughs> Weingard. Uh, Senior Vice President of uh, Design and Construction. Thank you very much. Marinda Rutledge. She's here on the Fast Party team. Rutledge. Rutledge. Okay, thank you. Pardon my diction. Mr. Chairman, thank you. And to this distinguished body, uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity to come here this, this afternoon and speak to you. Before I have get a too deep into it, Mr. Moss, yes, I really want you to tolerate the way we don't try to do this because we got a lot of business and I'm going to really try to keep it moving. Proceed. Um, 
again, I say thank you very much. Uh, I start with my opening slides. I, I think one of the most impressive uh, items that I bring to you is this city hired AECOM as the program manager. And what I want to do is go through a couple points on what that means. But what this first slide sees and you have it in front of you are major programs that we have conducted over the last five years. When you talk about cost and talk about capital expenditures, those projects represent in excess of $300 billion that we've overseen in the last five years. Thank you. You're talking about nationwide? Just within North America. I did not show you our global map. I'm just talking about North America. When I, if you would. I, I'm sorry the, the screen is a little bit. I think there are three elements that I want to talk about. First and foremost, what our scope of services are. Okay, look, hold on. This meeting, I wonder, should it even be in here? Should we be out there? So I'm going to be looking at that. Proceed. The second po proponent is our program, the status, and the results. And the third, and the third is what we're here today to talk about the contract extension. Sir, if you look, this is, this is, I'm sorry, when we came and competed in January, pardon me, in December 18th of 2017, the RP that we competed for spoke to pro program management services. Mr. Chair, can you hear me, sir? I'm here. Oh, okay, thank you. And, and, and when you look at that, go back to slide, please. When you look at the services, we competed an RFP for three years, from 2017 that would conclude in 2020. That was the RFP that we asked, we were asked to compete. There were seven tasks and seven projects. We gave you the opportunity to look at RFP. We competed against other firms, and we were selected to negotiate. When we negotiated, in 2017, December 2017, you'll look to the right. That was what was asked for in the RP. This is what we negotiated for 13 months. Still some program managed services, however, there were other elements that was removed. Hence, that's where we are today. Next slide, please. What, I, what I'd like to tell you is when you talk about what we've done, and those elements that we negotiated, there are probably four tents. One is we, we were asked to bring project funding and secure funding for about $80 million. Those projects were outlined. We did that. The number two was, this is what everyone talks about, which is a major tenant, is exploration of at least 6,000 lead service lines. Number three, which we were hired to do, was program management, as well as these other components, and, and public relations support. And number four, complete the 30% design of those projects that we were asked to go and secure funding. Next, please. When we talk about <coughs> excavation, what we, what we were told to do as, as baseline by the Concerned Pastors Consent Decree Program, we looked at 6,000 excavations in this year. We'll talk about that, as well as meeting 18,000 excavations by January of 2020. Let me show you my report card right now. Right now, when you look at this, when you look at this, this subtotal showed from the beginning to last till 2016, 8,833 excavations. What we did this year, we did 9,480 excavations. All right, that's why the mayor talked yesterday about a total of 18,313 excavations. That's where we are. That's where we are today. We're in. When you look at, when you, give me the whole slide, Miranda. When you look at what we've done, everyone always asks, well, what have you guys done? 
We completed the project plan, which was the $80 million. We have 9,480 excavations, November 30th. And I understand, Sam, can you tell me how many excavations we have going on right now? Hold up, come in, come in, Sam. And he's referring to Sam Cox, because I want all of these folks identified on the record. Mr. Cox. Mr. Cox. Identify yourself and how you associated with this. Yes, my name is Samuel Cox. I'm the president of Arco Systems. Uh, we do all field inspections along with uh, a couple other companies. As of uh, since November 30th through yesterday, we've done 500 homes. So that's 500 on top of this 9,408. And let me say this. Could I call some of them folks over? I want come on in, some of these. Well, folks. let can, 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 can you give me one moment? Well, the this reason goes, I'm doing it, Mr. Moss, is because we voted on this contract and service on the front end. We should have known and know what y'all were doing. This is a review for some of us. Yes, sir. So believe me, we got a vote to do. Yes, sir. If we vote five and move it forward, we so when it comes to spending time and getting stuff done, let me talk to council people and I'll let you continue as well. Yes, Ms. Fields. Uh, as this gentleman gives his presentation, are you speaking of the contract that council approved or some other no, there is no arrangement? Other no, ma'am. I'm talking to Was you. there ever any arrangement? I don't understand what you mean uh, by that. Excuse me. Was there ever any change? Change of scope? Change of contract? No. Any amendment to anything? No, ma'am. That's not how we do business. So that's the contract we're referring to, and our code has, uh, to the council, has these different people out in the field, what is it, about 30 of them? 30 to 60. And they do a lot of stuff with um, tablets and taking pictures and logging information. Steve, did we bring the doc slide? Thanks. It's on the website, I can get it. Okay. So, um, proceed, Mr. Arco was, was part of our team to help us with construction management. So I understand. You subcontract that's out correct. with it. I that's, understand. That's correct. I want everybody to understand. That's correct. Keep moving. And, and what I did in doing that, since you give me a moment, what I tried to make sure is most of my sub-consultants in the work was done with local Flint residents. I'm going to get to that. Look at them. I ain't said and, nothing yet. I'm going to get to that. Proceed. And so what I show you is all of the components. This is this bar here shows the, the components of the program management. This shows the, in terms of the contractors being the contractors doing the excavation as well as doing the replacement of lead service. We approve and their invoices and keep them moving. That is part of our construction management services. We say, you ask me about any task out of scope. We show you that this, we perform a lot of things that we have not in fact negotiated in terms of out of scope negotiations. That is what we're coming to you today about. Next slide please. This is something else I brought to you. When I came and I looked at this program and we looked at 36 months and we looked at what that program would dictate, I brought an economic model to you and I said what I would do is I would put local people to work. I said I also would improve not only the quality of life, but also I would impact taxes as well as revenue to this city. That's what I said I did. What we have done today, out of 116 people that have worked on my program, and the program for AD Com, 60 of them are Flint residents. And what I say to you, and some of them are in the room today, and I say thank you, we from ACOM say thank you, and you've done a great job for us. But more important than that, I've put a million dollars into this community in less than 12 months. My next slide, please. This is what we come to talk to you about today. An extension of service line, replacement project, change order, modified services, go slow. Extension I'm sorry. of services for lead service line. Replacement project. Extension of services for lead service. Okay. Change order of the modified services that we perform this year. Give an example or two. Can you give me an example? <coughs> Mr. Ed. Darby, this is Mr. No. This is Ed Thorpe. Ed, Ed Thorpe. Thorpe. Darby is a scholar. Um, Long and Darby is gone. Yes, sir. Ed is right. Last name Thorpe. Yes, sir. As part of what we have done, there have been numerous changes in procedures.
procedures that were required by the NRDC since the contract was first signed in uh, December of <laughs> Can you repeat that again? Since the contract was signed in December 2017, NRDC, uh, National Resources Defense Council, has made numerous requirements, <coughs> changes of things that needed to be done, specifically related to reporting, the way filter flushing, or the way flushing of the lines would happen, the way the filter checks would need to be done. There, there are just a number of things that had to be modified in the overall program in order to be in compliance with what the NRDC was required. And the NRDC is in that concerned pastor's lawsuit, and we got a consent agreement, but those changes and brought ups that we arguing over some of them now still, um, you know, I'm going to find out later, was they consented to, was they court ordered or whatever. Proceed, Ms. Uh, I also have the responses, as Ed talked to you about it, in RDC and, and uh, Michigan Department of Environment Quality. And lastly, what we've been also been doing is helping the city of Flint in all of their reports. When we, when we competed for this program, that was not an issue. That was not a concern. That was not a scope request. And so we've been helping the city of Flint and putting our staff and bringing other staff in to help do that. And lastly, we prepared... That's the type of stuff that the state was volunteering to bring stuff, people in, and they couldn't understand why the city say we think we got this. It was all kind of folks helping. Remember, Mr. Newsom, the state wanted to bring some folks in at a certain crucial time. Proceed, Mr. And lastly, we, we're preparing, we're, we're, in, we're in negotiation and, and, and preparing number, year number two, which will be 2019, the program scope, and, and how we will, in fact, bring, basically, complete all of the lead service lines before the end of 2019. That's, that's what we're doing. Last slide, please, Miranda. And so what I say to you right now is thank you, and we stand ready for any questions that, that you may have. I'm sure you have some uh, coming your way. Mr. Gray. Yes, no. Yes, sir. Uh, of this 1.1 million, I suppose most of it is on the first item, extension of services. I would think so, Patrick. Yes, my right. And and what do you know what that price is? Or? In terms of line items? Mr. No, Deuce? no, just. Extension of services for late service line. If, if you ask me how we broke that down, we, we've given that to your CFO. Your, your CFO. Your CFO. And if it's not in your package, I can give it to you. Okay. Now, what precipitated this? Is this when we got rid of hydro backing? Is that what it is? Uh, Ed, help me with that. Or Pat, help me with that, please. The extension of services is required because our contract was for 6000 Lead service line excavation. Okay. We're currently at the number I think is 9,300, right? So we've essentially uh, exceeded the goal by what's the math? 40%. About 40 that's, the, that's the additional money required. Just from going fast. More efficient is the term I'd, I'd like us to use. More efficient. All right. Okay. What was your question, Mr. Green? Okay. Where the, most of this money, uh, most of the 1.1 million, I think is going into the extension of services. The extension of services, and that was defined as the what? Well, it was defined as the, 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 the contract required 6,000 lead service line excavations, and we provided for over 90. Right, and there's a difference between the excavations and the actual change out of lead and galvanized. And uh, Mr. D Mr. Thorpe, who is the Mr. Thorpe? Because we've got another guy in the room with us. He's a U of M guy. Mr. Thorpe, you got some background in predictive modeling, oh. or you don't? 
I have used modeling, predictive modeling, like is being talked about with the University of Michigan model, is not something that I have a great deal of experience with. But we got the man in the room who do, and um, eventually we'll hear from him. But if it's only relevant to council people making decisions, we welcome you, we'll hear from you, point and we'll get to some. You don't need a point of information, you got the floor. No, What's, I don't want the floor. Well, one of my five. I, just we ain't, I got no motion on the floor, Miss Field. See, if you want to argue with me about rules, you're going to lose. I Let me say ask. this. Hold up. Now you ain't got the floor. I got it. If I gave you the floor. You don't have to do a point of information. It's not in messing with your five minutes because ain't no motion on the floor. So proceed. I want to thank the people who are here. Thank them for all their hard work. But I wonder if they could now leave the room since Janelle can't even see to identify who's okay. speaking. Miss Fields, if that's what you want to know, I'm going to say this. We'll help Janelle identify. This is a public meeting. They welcome if you want to move out to the outside so everybody who's still out in the auditorium can hear. We'll entertain that. But right now, um, if Janelle say something loud, I'm going to hear it. And I'm going to correct it. She's the keeper of the record. So if that was the point of information, I'm going to get back on track. Look, AECOM, in my opinion, should also be managing restoration. They've only been managing lead service line replacement. Restoration is on its own. Goyette got a lead service line replacement contract and they got a restoration. And ain't anybody really looking at that. I'm looking at it. So I'm all in favor of broadening the scope and doing what needs to be done for the best interest of the citizens of the city of Flint. I'm telling you, Mr. Newsom, I know you was glad they was here with reporting and $5 million company. Big company came in in the middle of an emergency. But I can go on and on, but I'm this type of chair. Mr. President. Mr. Mr. Chair. For the benefit of, of those that are in here standing and those that are out there, I would most, uh, make a motion that we move this meeting out on the floor so everybody can have... Uh, you in discussion. You got a motion? Yes, sir. You That's made it. it? I just made it. And so the motion I understood is to move this meeting to the bigger chambers. Is there support or a second? Mr. Davis. Mr. Chair, I second. It's been moved and probably second. Any discussion? Any other public got something to say? Mr. Um, yep, uh, I, I asked uh, Mr. Mark if he had any other uh, slide presentation. There, there are none. So for the benefit of everybody. Well, I, I got one that. I want people to see before they leave, and I'll get to it. It's them dots that's showing all the work has been done. Okay. Mr. Branch is working on that. Um, Mr. Mrs. I Fields. Um, I'm just wondering how long it will take Janelle to set up again out there. About 10 minutes. 10 minutes. How do people schedule looking for 10 minutes? What them live let them say? Any objections? Mr. Moon, any objections? Any objections? All right. All in favor of moving. Well, we, if we don't get that out there, they done did their presentation, but before we leave from in here, I want to see if you can flash it up there for a visit. Can it be flashed now? Yeah. Okay, let's flash it. You got something to flash too? I could. Okay, we'll flash it. But um, we going to move after these flashings if there's no objection to the outside. So the outside people can be organizing while we flash it. Y'all ready to vote? All in favor of giving the people more room. Oh, that wasn't a motion. Moving to the outside. I was at, I was editorial. At. Moving to the outside. Raise your hand or signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. Any abstentions? So can we flash Mr. Branch and can we flash? Should I call you Professor? You are Professor Schwartz. Schwartz. Yes, sir. Professor Schwartz. Let's do the flashes and then pick back up out there. I think these flashes is worth seeing. You got something you want to flash, Mr. Woods? Okay, the first thing we're going to look at is I want y'all to see the records that hadn't been kept by the city for years. 
that this program, Fast Start Now, is getting us some more permanent detailed records. This was a big issue in the water crisis. See, Santino, do I look old? Don't answer that, Mr. Gear. I'm going to say this. But I've been around a little while, so I think that this is something you need to see. Miss Fields. I really think that if you're going to be showing a predictability model, then we have that discussion. We need to be able to see that. I would like to know why we can't move this projector and screen out there as well. Well, maybe we can, and we'll work on that. But all we own now is these quick flashes. Once we move, we'll be working on that, too, like an octopus. So I want to see these two quick flashes. And remember, when he flashed, Miss Fields, if you got something to say, I'm not that hard line, but I ain't going to go all day in this room. And I want others to see. So, you know. We got time. And remember, we got hearings going on. Oh, yeah. So I think that Zara and the M Live is kind of pushing some of this um, story because she writes about everything and find out stuff that I don't know. So I'm proud of them. I'll look at the. So IT gonna come move the projector, Miss Fields. I just want to note that since you're going to bring him up here, and since council will have some time, I would like to hand around. This is Professor Schwartz's declaration and the concerned pastors. All righty. You might um, want to give this. the clerk a copy. Absolutely. We would receive this without objection. Um, do we need it there here? No, I just... Okay. Now, this is what I want counsel to see. President Winfrey, if he missed it, I want to tell him. There he is. Newsom want to be the council president. Look at him in his chair. You don't. No. Because we don't make a lot of money. Okay, go ahead, Mr. President. Can you guys see this? All right, on, on, the, on the city's website, on the Fast Start Replacement Program, the information is out there, they have staff every week, but also a map. This is phase one through four. This shows all the work that was done in the phases out there. It can be expanded, it can be zoned in. Each dot represents a home that was done, here for seven. There was some, any ward you want to look at is there. All these are the records of homes that were done in phases one through four. I go back, I can look at phase five. All the uh, red dots and blue dots in indicate work that was done in 2018. And there's a lot of conversation about particularly in, zone, in uh, Ward 5, that no work is being done in, in Zone 5. In Ward 5, all those red dots represent, you know, focus with you, sorry. Those are individual residents. If you can click on any one of these, these dots, and it will tell you what was done. So on that house, 1322 Mason Street, they did a partial public portion of the search. This information has been out there for two I'm years. Sorry. Yes, I am aware of So these records now are going into our permanent records for the city of Atlanta, so we'll know the composition of these red search lines. Now, can you, you say you've talked about the color, the red one is the service line replacement completed? So this one is just 2018. 2018. Blue ones are excavation. Okay, but you showed me something before where it say whether or not a service line was completed or whether it was copper to copper. Have you shown that? Yes. Right there. Completed. Right side. Okay, but then them, them colors show that. Can you got that map? Can you show it to me? That map right there. And so, have, do everybody on the council, Mr. Griggs, can you see that and what it does? 
is telling you um, the public course and rugs replace. If it's green, both sides, the public and the private side, was replaced. And you know what we mean by public and private side, if it's going to the house or on the street. And then it also says no service lines was replaced on the private portion if it's yellow or gold. And then blue, no service line replacement necessary, copper to copper. So I think that's um, what we started this venture out because had we had these records in the in the past, it would have saved us a lot of digging, a lot of time. So I'm trying to tie some things in. Mr. Professor, Mr. Professor, are you ready to flash? I'd rather just present than flash. Sir. Well, you might rather <laughs> to present than flash, but not in this meeting. I said flash, you said prevent, you ain't got no vote. I got it, sir. I ain't even entertaining the motion. Right now, I'm going to let you flash. If you choose not to flash and present, don't even get started. We finna go out there. No, so sir. you flashing or present? I like to flash, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, you as a professor, I see it, I see it. Now, if you get on my good side and this council overrule me, you can present. They can put a motion on the floor anytime. Right now, I'm hoping to flash. See, Professor Sports, I've invited you to a hearing. I've invited you to a hearing. So, this ain't your original. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Chair, can we move first? This room is so hot. Oh, sure. no, you want to move and let him do that out there? I got it right here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. give him about two, three minutes, and then we're going to let him flash, yeah. and he'll present at a later time. Let's fall again. For the person that's going to leave, we've got 10 more minutes with us. So he's saying he's got it. Let's indulge. Let's put it in. University of Michigan, the Raw School of Business. Okay. My background is a data analyst. I do data science and predictive modeling. Uh, thank you, members of council, for, for having me here. First, I'm just here to just discuss some of the work that I've done over the past two and a half years. We're here to flash a, a diagram, give us a brief overview, and you're going to present later. Yes, sir. Right here what I have is a map. It has all the information that Mr. Branch just showed on the publicly available maps that have been on the City of Flint website. Uh, and I, I commend it come and, and the city for posting that information. I just want to show some more information that we also have. 
The information that's been publicly available is every home that has been excavated, either through hydrovac or traditional excavation, whether it had a replacement or not. As you all know, not all homes have been visited through excavation of any form. And so for the homes that have not yet been excavated, what we can do is give a best guess and a prediction of whether a home has lead or galvanized or whether it has copper. And so what I've done for each of those, my colleagues Jacob Abernathy and others and I at the University of Michigan and Georgia Tech have put together a model that produces those probabilities. What you're seeing here are green for extremely low chance of lead or galvanized, which means copper, and that might be confirmed copper, just as the copper that uh, the previous map was shown, or very likely copper. <coughs> if you would like me to zoom in on any particular street, I, I can do that, Mr. Councilman. No, go down, go, go up here, go down, go down, because this is an area with brown and green. So this is Carpenter Road. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is DuPont, that's First Ward stuff. So my thing is, when we do in the First Ward, in this case, the brown is high predictability. The, uh, the red. This so, color, yes, this yes, color, sir. whatever it is. I'm yeah, so the, okay, the, while so the green is... High predictability, not just in Central. It's, it's a lot of brown, but this is high predictability as well. That's right, sir. Mr. Chair. Madam um, Fields. I would just uh, suggest, you know, one thing that's helpful, even though we vote on things for the whole city, we all want to see our own wards, is at some point in time, if you can do an overlay that shows where the ward boundaries are, that would be helpful. Sure thing. Okay, so have we flashed? Do you feel like you present the flash? I promise you, you're going to be a presenter. This is the flash. Get ready to be a real presenter, maybe out there, but you done flash. Y'all ready to move to the outside, Mr. Green? Just one quick question. Is it, I think it's safe to say that the red, red markings are the newer homes. Uh, the red markings are likely lead or galvanized or confirmed, already verified to be lead or galvanized. In all likelihood, the red are older on average than the green home. Right? Green is copper. Thank you. Mr. David. Thank you. Can you zoom that back out like you had yes, a sir. second ago? And I got one question for you. Okay, I can see you can make it look right there. So that's fine. Now I'm looking at all the Civic Park from here. I know the shape of Civic Park School. I was a commission over there. Just as I stated in a meeting earlier, I was concerned when they were saying the fifth ward. When I'm looking at nothing but, let me just show you, absolutely, Councilman, all of that is where my ward is. Everything over there is red. Now, people should be running over each other, but it's a poor neighborhood. And I'm wondering, is this going to get the type of, I'm going to say, replacement or analysis, because at the same time, uh, Professor, it's a major demo going over there by uh, Landman. How does it fund? They demo and they shrink in the neighborhood. With disturbing all of that lead, and, and they doing a vessels removal, abating old houses and everything. But all of the poor folks is right in that neighborhood. It should pe be people running over each other from Welch all the way over. All of that just solid red, and it's a historic Civic Park neighborhood. Well, and I'm, I'm Professor Ford. See my right hand. Yes, sir. It's raised up. Yes, sir. I promise and swear you're gonna do a presentation. This meeting is fixing to move out to the chambers, and then we'll pick up the event. It might be the best. I have an answer for you.